It radiates an aura of exclusivity, whether as historical table settings or a modern work of art. Porcelain has lent class to everything for centuries. Now for its 300th anniversary, its history is being presented at an exhibition in the Bavarian town of Zelb. Julia Rolf, an art historian and expert on porcelain, helped conceive Europe's biggest porcelain exhibition ever, entitled From a King's Dream to Mass Production. Porcelain was originally ordered by kings and princes, and later it was also made in Europe. It was reserved for the nobility. Europe's first hard-paste porcelain was invented in 1710 at the court of Saxony. The alchemist Johann Friedrich Böttger had been jailed for claiming he could turn base materials into gold. Then, experimenting with quartz and other minerals, he discovered how to reproduce the white gold previously known only from China. Now porcelain no longer had to be imported. Since then, the high-class material has reflected the trends and fashions of different eras. In the 18th century, the Rococo period, we see verve and cheerfulness in dancer figures painted in bright pastel colors. In contrast, during the Napoleonic era, porcelain had ornate painting, lots of gold, the kind of decoration the emperor liked. The French ruler's personal dinner plates from the 19th century are on display at the exhibition, along with the porcelain of the Medici dynasty. These are unique objects worth millions. There's a mysterious story associated with this service. It was on a ship crossing the Baltic Sea to Russia to the court of Catherine the Great. But the ship sank in 1747. More than 250 years later, the sunken ship was found by chance. The porcelain was recovered in fantastic condition. It had been covered in moss and slumbered undisturbed on the seabed. Today, designers prize porcelain as an innovative material. It looks very fragile, but is actually rather robust. The architect and designer Marcello Morandini was one of the first to use it extensively in his work. He makes sculptured room dividers and organic-looking storage shelves. There simply aren't any limitations with porcelain not in the language of its shape, nor technically. You can form anything out of it, change its transparency, and decorate it from the outside as you like. And it lends itself to being combined with other materials. This versatility has always fascinated artists. Here's a porcelain painting by Andy Warhol. Here, an original by Roy Lichtenstein in the form of a cup. And here, an ironic self-portrait by Cindy Sherman. Artists have often investigated the possibilities of porcelain. Like Franck Bragigan, the Frenchman created a room installation especially for this exhibition. He recombined porcelain pieces slated for the waste bin. Imperfect products become works of art. The beauty in Europe is about perfection, is about uh, balance, equilibrium, and high quality uh, handcraft work. In Japan, it's a bit different. It's the mistake which makes things um, very precious. Uh, by making everything perfect, you want that mass production is always looking the same. And I'm doing the opposite. That means every object is now totally unique. Porcelain is a barometer of its time, a material with one foot in tradition and another in modernity, and it's been so in Europe for 300 years. <laughs>